Now it's been a long time in coming, but the government has now published the new amendments to all the new building regulations for England. Now these amendments are to building regulations document F for ventilation, parts L, which is the conservation of fuel and power, as well as the release of a new building regulation, which is document O, which is for overheating of homes. Now, I am really interested in your thoughts about this, guys. So if you've got any thoughts about what we're going to see today in this video, get the comments down in the comments section below. So let's get on with it then. In December 2021, the Department of Leveling Up Homes and Communities or the DLUHC announced a raft of changes which are going to happen to the building regulations in 2022. Now these approved documents take effect from the 15th of June 2022 but only for England. Wales and Scotland have got to fend for themselves now. But if you've already submitted your plans to build your new house or build an extension They've kind of extended that to June 2023 to get the uh, building finished. And if the building isn't finished, then you have to comply to the new building regulations. So make sure you get your extensions in and done before then. So these building regulations are kind of being phased in over the next few years. So by the time we reach 2025, our homes and businesses should have a net zero carbon emissions. So, according to new building regulations now, when you're building a new home, it needs to produce less than 75% lower carbon emissions than the houses we're actually building today. They will also have to have a reduction of 31% of carbon dioxide. But that's compared to the standards we have when we're building homes today. So what are these building regulations then? And do we need to comply with them? So the building regulations have been set out so when you're building or modifying a house, they are the standards you must comply with. And they are regulations, so they are enforceable and you can be fined or even your house knocked down if you don't comply with the building regulations. Things like fire protection, insulation and heating homes all come under the building regulations. Even if you're having a boiler upgraded or changed now, this now comes under the building regulations. One of the biggest changes in this part L of the building regulations for heating engineers is a massive change in flow temperatures. So for our heating systems, our flow temperatures should not exceed 55 degrees and we should try and get it lower if we can. I think the reason why they brought this in is because condensing boilers do not condense if their return temperature goes over this 55 degrees. So if you keep your flow temperature lower than 55 degrees, then your return temperature, because you will lose heat from your radiators and your underfloor heating system, will come back cooler. So your boiler will always be in condensing mode because boilers now have to make a minimum efficiency of 92%. So that's what they say we need to make and that's what they need to do. So when we're installing new boilers for new systems and new builds, or if we're uh, changing already built homes, they're changing the system in there, then these are the things we've got to comply with, according to part L of the building regs. Now, one of the problems we could get with this lower flow temperature is if we've got an unvented cylinder or a cylinder where we store hot water, because that water got to be stored over 60 degrees. Some guys will say it's got to be over 50 degrees because we need to kill Legionella. So we don't poison our customers, then we would, should be advising that we have a flow temperature of greater than 60 degrees to so 65 degrees if we're heating a cylinder. And this is where underfloor heating comes in along with a cylinder because the underfloor heating circuit can be kept lower than 50 degrees, can be around about 38 degrees circulating around, where we need that higher temperature for killing Legionella. So there is a balance for combi boilers. Yes, needs to be kept lower than 55 degrees, but if we're using system boilers or heat only boilers on unvented cylinders, then this is a problem where this can come in, where we will have to have a higher flow temperature. 
So let's have a look at the changes in this Part L of the building regulations which affect plumbers and gas engineers. Well the first big change for Part L is it used to be in four sections. It used to be L1A, L1B, L2A and L2B which was for homes and commercial buildings. They've now just changed it to two volumes. Volume 1 is for dwellings, new or old. Volume 2 is for places that aren't dwellings, old and new. So like factory schools, offices, they come under volume 2. So the first big change, let's have a look at heating and hot water pipe work. Now regulation 4, paragraph 24, is all about insulating pipe work. So it says primary circulation pipes will need to be insulated. That also includes pipe work that passes into voids. So on the floors and in ducts going up walls and stuff like that, all this pipe work will need to be insulated in a new build. All the primary circulation pipes for hot water, so from the boiler to a cylinder, will need to be insulated throughout its length. Secondary circulation pipes from uh, hot water cylinders will also need to be insulated and so will the cylinders themselves. So all the pipe work coming off the cylinders, whether they're vented or unvented, will require insulation. But it does say for storage vessels of hot water this must be at least one meter off every pipe or where it terminates into a wall or a floor. Now 4.25 which is dealing with existing installations in existing homes it says if you upgrade the boiler and the cylinder then any exposed pipe work what you can see will require insulation. Now, I agree with a lot of the things in this part L of the building regs, but one of the things I can't quite get my head around is insulating central heating pipe work, which is in a floor. Now, yes, I get that we need to insulate pipe work if it's outside the envelope of the building. So whether it's under a suspended floor and it's cold under there, it could freeze, or it's in a loft and it could be cold and it can freeze. Yes, I get that needs to be insulated. And that's what we would always do. But actually in between the ground floor and the first floor, or a first and second floor, we need to insulate the pipe work under those floors or in a wall when it's within the envelope of the building. Do we really care about that tiny little heat loss those pipes would lose? Because where would they lose that heat? It would come into the room. It's unlikely to go in the room below, could do, but it's more likely to go into the room above or heat the floor a little bit, but we're going to be using that heat. It's not lost heat, like it would be if it was under a suspended floor or in a loft. I don't quite get that bit. Anyway guys, put in the comments down below if you agree or disagree with me on that one. Now regulation 5 paragraph 10 is all about when we're installing complete new systems, whether it's in a new build or whether it's in an existing property. So if you're doing a full installation, you will be required to pipe size and size the emitters or the underfloor heating correctly because we only have a flow temperature now of 55 degrees or less. So the lower you can get this flow temperature, the better it's gonna be. So for new builds, the main option for that would be if you've only got a flow temperature of 50, 55 degrees, you're going to be putting underfloor heating and not radiators in because radiators will need to be resized and will be a lot bigger than the radiators we've got now in new builds. Also, new builds, they use a lot of 10 millimeter pipe. We won't be able to use that in new builds from now on because they need to be heat pump ready. So 10 millimeter pipes, not good for heat pumps. So 15 millimeter pipes um, will need to be installed when we're upgrading new systems if we're using a gas boiler for when we rip the gas boiler out and we put heat pumps in. Now one of the other things it says in the regs is if you've got a pipe running down a dot and dab wall, that will also need to be insulated because it's classed as being in a void. And to prove you've done it, You've also got to take photographs and submit them to the building regs to show that you've done the insulation on all the pipe work. 
So you're not going to be able to get away with it, are you? Just throw the pipe work in, cover it up with the floorboards and say, yeah, I insulated it. No, no, no. You've got to send in photographic evidence to prove you have done that. But it does say if you are changing just the boiler and you cannot get a flow temperature down from this boiler to 50, 55 degrees, then it says you've got to try and get it to the least temperature you can do because you might not be able to upsize the radiators or change the underfloor heating or whatever. So you've got to try and get it down to the least flow temperature you can get it to, to still give the comfort temperature in the homes. I think that'll be open to abuse, won't it? Now regulation 5.14 says, if we've got more than 150 square meters of floor area in the house, this will need to have at least two separate zones controlled by separate controls. So room thermostat. Regulation 15.15 says, if we don't need the pump, the pump must go off as well. So a lot of the time pumps are just wired in so they run constantly when we're calling for heat. But now they're saying when we're not calling for heat, the pump has to be able to be turned off. Regulation 5 paragraph 16 says we must have separate time and controls for heating and hot water. So if we're doing things like on vented cylinders, uh, on uh, S-plans, we need to have a separate time clock for the heating system and a separate time clock for the hot water. And paragraph 5.17 says we must have fully pumped systems now. So gravity hot water, gone. We need to upgrade it to fully pumped systems if we're changing the boiler. So it won't be just changing the boiler, we'll have to upgrade the cylinder, the pipework and everything to comply with these regulations. A regulation 5.20 now says when we're upgrading a boiler we have to fit thermostatic radiator valves on every radiator except the one where the room thermostat is. This used to be just a recommendation but now in the building regs it says we've got to do it. So if we're upgrading the boiler or we're putting a new heating system in we must fit thermostatic radiator valves. Now a lot of heating engineers have always kind of shied away of telling customers they need thermostatic radiator valves because they're going to put the price in for changing all the thermostats and they know they're going to be undercut. But if we're on a level playing field now that everybody, when you're upgrading a boiler or you're installing a new boiler, you have to fit thermostatic radiator valves. So if you are having a new heating system fitted and you are having a boiler fitted and you haven't got thermostatic radiator valves, then you're going to require them as well as a room stat which complies with boiler plus controls. Now also added into part L of the building regulations now is that all central heating systems must be kept clean and be checked regularly basically every time you do a service on the boiler and also every five years the inhibitor in the system will need to be drained and refilled. This is all in accordance with BS7593. It even says that in the building regs now. It says you can find all this information in the British standards. So the building regs are actually quoting the British standards. So even though the British standards are a code of practice, the building regs are actually saying we need to follow those so that's what we need to do. So if you're installing a new boiler now, it will require a magnetic filter. The system water will need to be checked and if it needs cleaning, it'll need to be cleaned and this could be done with a cold flush, it could be done with a chemical flush, it could be done with a power flush or a magna cleanse. And then to protect this system, we need to add inhibitor to make sure we keep our pH levels correct and we don't create corrosion. And also, we need to commission these systems correctly and we need to leave evidence that we've commissioned this system correctly. So we're talking about range rating boilers, we're talking about sizing boilers correctly, we're talking about sizing heat emitters correctly. All this information will need to be left with the customer along with the manufacturer's instructions. So I think what's going to happen in the future now is free estimates for installing a new boiler ain't going to happen because you're now going to have to spend time sizing 
radiators, sizing the pipework, sizing the boiler to make sure it's correct for the installation and you're not oversizing the boiler. And after installing this boiler, we've also got to make sure it's commissioned properly. So our flow temperatures are kept below 55 degrees. Our boilers are range rated down for the right kilowatts for the property. These are all the things we've got to do and this is going to take time and it's going to take more money. So if you're a customer, you're going to have to make sure you comply with all these regulations. Not just take the cheapest option, you need to really bear in mind all the information needs to be gained by the engineers before they can install this. So you can't expect an engineer to come around, spend two hours at your house and not charge you for it. Now obviously some engineers will say, if I get the job, we'll wipe that off the price. And also it's not gonna be a quick in and out now. It's gonna take a lot longer to install these boilers. So the price is gonna go up. Still gonna be nowhere near the price of installing an air source heat pump, but prices will increase when we come to have these new regulations in June. So be aware of that if you're a customer, expect your prices to go up. And this also means that the price of new builds are going to go up as well. So the changes in these building regs are gonna have a massive knock-on effect for the price of properties and the price of any work that's going to be done in the future. So that's a quick look at all these changes what are going to happen to us for part L of the building regulations, conservation of fuel and power. They're massive for the industry. Now, it also says that new builds need to get ready for air source heat pumps. So it's not banning boilers in new builds yet. They've got to upgrade insulation. So we've got to make sure we reduce our CO2 levels when we're installing all this stuff. The insulation stuff we've got to put in now for new builds is getting bigger and bigger and bigger because of the heat loss. In a bit, we won't need radiators or air source or whatever because there'll be that much insulation put into a property. There'll be no bloody heat loss. So just bear in mind all these changes what are coming in and just be aware if you're a customer this is obviously the price is going to be put down to you so that's my quick look at part l of the building regulations so if you want to see any more of my videos check this one out